Hi guys, uh, it's Abu Pasha here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be discussing credit cards again. And previously I discussed credit cards in two separate videos. Those two videos covered why you should be using a credit card and also the best way to apply for a credit card. This video is going to be focusing on how various financial institution or credit card companies decide on whether or not your application is going to be rejected or not. And it will help those who have been rejected for credit cards to know why they've been rejected and to correct the reasons why they've been rejected so that they don't get rejected again. So what usually happens when you apply for a credit card, these days it's all done online. When you hit the submit button, the contents of your application get sent to a server of, which belongs to the financial institution and they have an automated system which looks at the data in your application form. Your date of birth, your name, your address, it checks your credit file and it also looks at various pieces of information that is in your application form. It then decides very quickly, within seconds, whether or not you're going to be accepted and number two, what your credit limit is going to be. Now on a good day, you'll get accepted for a credit card and you'll be given a good credit limit. But on a bad day, unfortunately, you'll be rejected and you'll probably be wondering why. Some people have very high credit scores. They always pay their bills on time. They've never had a default. and they are credit worthy, but for some reason, some credit cards decline them. So we're going to discuss that now. So the first thing that you've got to know is that each lender scores each applicant differently. One company might prefer applicants who don't pay off their credit card bill in full every single month. They prefer people who pay the minimum balance Another credit card company may like the opposite. They might like the people who do pay off their credit card every month. So in this way, you could get two different companies dealing with the same application differently. So that is why it's so important that when you're applying for a credit card, the best way to go about it is to get a soft check done. And I showed you that in a previous video where you go to an aggregator website like Experian, for example, and it will search through different credit cards and see which credit card you are most likely to be accepted for, given your credit score and also your personal details. One of the important things that you've got to do is make sure that you haven't, don't have any defaults on your credit file. That means that you haven't got any late payments or payments that you simply haven't made. Once you have that, you're probably going to have a few problems for the next six years, believe it or not. Um, but there are ways to correct that and I'll explain later. The most important thing for you to do is always pay at least the minimum payment on a credit card. And if not, uh, pay the full balance. Paying the full balance is great because that way you don't get charged any interest. The other thing is that your credit score doesn't actually matter. Your credit score is an arbitrary number that a company like Experian or Equifax will put on you. The financial institution isn't actually looking at your credit score, it's looking at your credit file. They will look at things like your credit utilization, uh, your payment history. Do you pay the minimum balance? Do you pay the full balance every month? They'll look at uh, what other loans you might have, what other credit cards you might have. They'll look at a whole bunch of things and each credit card company will look at different things. So don't get obsessed with your credit score.
I've known situations where people have a very, very high credit score. They apply for a particular credit card and then they get rejected. And then they're asking, well, why did I get rejected? Well, the, probably the reason is because that card company doesn't want somebody who pays their full balance on time every single month. Probably what they're looking for is someone who pays the minimum balance because they want to probably make some money from you. Each credit card company has its own criteria. So you've got to remember that. One other thing that I haven't touched on is the electoral role. That's actually very important. So if you are not on the electoral roll, make sure that you are on there because financial institutions and also credit companies like Experian and Equifax will use the electoral roll as a way to tell your address. So if your address matches up to that, that's extra points for you. And most credit card companies like that. Another little known fact is that when a credit card company is going through your application, they might uh, search your fraud report to see if there's anything in your fraud file. There are certain companies out there that hold information on fraud about different people. So credit card companies do have access to that and they may run your name through that fraud company to see if anything pops up. If you have been rejected for a credit card, this is what I would do. You can apply for another credit card, um, but I would personally wait maybe three months, ideally six months if you can wait that long. When you do apply, make sure that you go to aggregator sites such as Experian, which will run a soft check on you and they will tell you what the likelihood of your application succeeding is before you actually apply. I ran through this in my previous video, the link is in the description. Don't always assume that because your credit score is very high that you will be accepted for a credit card. Some credit card companies are looking for customers who aren't so perfect because they want to make some money from them. If you have a low credit score and you think that that low credit score is hurting you in getting a credit card, that's probably true. So you've got to boost your credit score. Uh, the way that you do this is make sure, first of all, that you don't get any more defaults. So always pay at least the minimum balance on time. That goes for loans and credit cards and mortgages. If you do have an, a particular account for which there is a late payment or no payment, what I would do is try clearing the balance completely and then closing that account. Before you close the account, contact that particular organization and tell them that, look, I want to clear the account and I'm going to clear the account now, but is it at all possible for you to remove the late payment mark or the no payment mark from my credit file? They might say no, maybe they might say yes, but it's worth a go. The other thing is to get your credit utilization relatively low. So what, what is credit utilization? Let's say you've got three credit cards and the limit on each of those is £5,000 each. So that's £15,000. And let's say that you've maxed out on all of the cards. So let's say you've got something like £13,000 on those three credit cards. That's 13000 out of 15000 13000 divided by 15000 multiplied by 100 will give you your credit utilisation percentage. That percentage you're looking to be as low as possible. The lower, the better. My research tells me that if you can get your credit utilisation to below 10%, that's great. But if it goes to 30%, that's okay. But if it goes higher than 30%, then it's going to start affecting your credit rating adversely. And the likelihood of you being rejected for 
a credit card will reduce. So make sure your credit utilization is under control. It is better to have four different credit cards, each with a, a £5,000 limit, and the full utilization is 13000 That is better than having three credit cards, each with £5,000 limit, and you've got the same amount of money, 13000 because the credit utilization will be higher. Generally, to boost your credit score, make sure that the age of your credit is long and old. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have two credit cards. One credit card you've had for the last 10 years and the other one you've had for the last 15 years. Let's say the credit limits are the same and let's say the credit utilization at this time is the same as well. Now let's say me, I've got one credit card which is six months old and I've got another credit card which is 18 months old. I've got the same limit as you and the same credit utilization. You will most likely score higher than me. You'll be more credit worthy because your credit accounts are older. Generally speaking, credit card companies like to deal with people who have a long history of credit. And for this reason, I always advise young people who are, as soon as you turn 18, generally speaking, you should always get a credit card if you can, because that way you can start building up your credit cards. Um, but more importantly, you build up a credit history that dates back quite a long time. You don't want too many hard inquiries on your credit file in a short space of time. So for example, let's say if I apply for one credit card today, I don't get it, I get rejected. I then apply for another credit card tomorrow. Now that second credit card company, they don't know that I got rejected. But what the credit file will show is that there was a hard inquiry done the previous day, but it won't show the result of that hard inquiry. It will just say that there was a hard inquiry. So let's say they do their hard inquiry. I get rejected from that credit card as well. Now I go to the third credit card company the next day. In all likelihood, they'll probably reject me. And the reason is because of all these hard inquiries that are coming up in a very short time span. So try and avoid that. If you get rejected for a credit card today, my suggestion is use the soft search method. A link of that is in description. And if that then fails, then I would check my credit file. You can go to Experian, Equifax, but I would probably wait six months before applying again. When you check your credit file, look for anything that isn't right. Look for any um, any defaults, look for your credit score th that might be suspiciously low. Calculate your credit utilization so you yourself can actually run an analysis on whether or not you are credit worthy, so to speak. Even though I've told you that some credit card companies like people who pay the minimum balance, generally speaking, the most credit worthy people are the ones who do pay the full balance. The only exception that applies to that is when you've got 0% balance or 0% purchases on your credit card, in which case you don't need to clear that. Once a credit card company has run its check and it's returned the results saying, yes, you've been accepted, that's great. What will happen is, is that they'll give you a credit limit and then a few days later they'll send the credit card in the post. You can then activate that card and start using it. If they reject your application, well, your journey ends there.
So that's it guys. If this video was informative for you, then please give a like, give a subscribe. That would be much appreciated. And I shall see you next time. Thank you.